My name's Blythe Cownan. Our business is Runny Mead Farm and I run this with my partner, Greg Hooper. Uh, we started Runny Mead Farm in 2014 when we moved down from the Pilbara and bought our first property on the coast from here. We built our business with beef breeders and started our pastured egg business on that block. The couple run five marimas with the hen flock 24-7 to prevent predation from foxes and large birds. 50% of the pastured eggs are sold direct to customers at markets, with the remaining 50% being sold to wholesale. Then in 2019, got the opportunity to take on Darina, the property where we are now, which is a ex-dairy property. I was very fortunate to travel around the world, both on personal travel and with work, um, working with animal welfare across the world, doing some industry tours. And one of the key things that really stood out to me was land degradation, and particularly in the association with livestock. And that was quite confronting as someone who is a nature lover and an animal lover and working in animal production. And I guess that was the point we decided that we wanted some skin in the game and to really put those principles into practice and see if we could contribute towards agriculture making a, a healthier planet. One of my pet irks is on our grant applications and things. It's the question is, how are you going to limit the impact on the environment through your farming activities? And I always cross it out because I'm going to maximise my impact, but that impact is going to be positive. We're at the beginning of March, which is the end of summer. So we're a winter rainfall system. Um, rain will start for us in about May and go through, our growing season will go through till November, December. Traditionally, this would be the driest the farm has been, and it has been a very dry summer. Uh, so at the moment we'll see cows and weaners um, cleaning up dry feed, ready for our autumn seeding program. Uh, our chooks are on the same kind of a job because maintaining ground cover is so important to us. Uh, we do leave a lot of ground cover on which can cause issues as we're seeding. So at the moment it's everyone's job to be knocking down that ground cover and making sure we can get our seeding equipment through so that we can introduce our next lot of diversity. Uh, so in a lot of paddocks sort of driving around southwest WA at this stage, you'll see a lot of bare ground. Uh, and we're really proud of what's happening out there at the moment, that we've got most of our ground covered up. Regenerative agriculture to me is coming back to recognising all of those complex relationships between our soil, our plant, our animals and humans as part of that system and managing it to have really functional, healthy soil systems, um, functional water systems, functional energy flow, and so that we've got thriving ecosystems that, that really support a lot of life and produce really nutrient dense food for our communities. We follow sort of regenerative principles when it comes to soil health, which is all focused around letting plants um, do their job, keeping ground cover, keeping living roots in the soil for as long as possible to keep those sugars going down to our biology and making sure that we're recording, monitoring uh, and then adapting our management to make sure we're getting the results that we want. So the process of going through that is really important to focus on diversity. Uh, so a lot of our modern agriculture focuses on monocultures and it's diversity where you've got different plant uh, types, shapes, root types and shapes, all doing a different job in that ecosystem. So really important to be getting diversity into the system. So planting multi-species, uh, focusing on what we want in our paddocks rather than what we don't want. Things like weeds are an indicator of something going on in the paddock, they're there for a reason and it's about recognising what that reason is and what you can change management wise to for those plants to phase out of the system. Um, seeds and weed seeds are everywhere. It just depends on the conditions being right for them to grow. Uh, we've seen animal health benefits as far as reduced cases of things like pink eye and bacterial foot infections. There have been so many challenges along the way. 
And I guess all of us, when we start on an adventure, if we could look back and had all the information 10 years down the track as we did when we started, it would be so much easier. Uh, finding a community, I think has been the biggest one. And particularly when we started, there wasn't a lot of talk about Regen. There was quite a big global community, but not necessarily a huge local community. And finding support through that process, uh, particularly the transition is an area which we could have done much better. And so really, empowering yourself with knowledge and information so that you can make the right decisions for your business, uh, your family, your animals and your land is super important. For people starting their own regen journey, uh, my biggest advice is to invest in yourself. Uh, really put yourself out there, make networks, learn principles, not recipes, because principles can be applied anywhere. And once you understand the principles, that are taking you either towards or away from your goals, you can, you can match things up to make it work. Um, if you're just asking for recipes, then that can work in one particular place, in one particular situation, but it doesn't add to your, your larger tool bag. I think the thing I'm most proud of is the relationships that we've made along the way that have both led to opportunities for us and helped other people on their journey. Uh, it can be a tough old world out there and the more friends you've got and the more networks you've got and the more people you can throw ideas around, it just makes life so much more fun. And we have done a really good job of creating a network, supporting a network and having a network support us, which is, is hugely important and something I am really proud of.